when you look at your desires, are you looking at them feeling ashamed, feeling like you need to hide them, feeling like you're not good enough to achieve them, feeling like if you go for those desires, then someone's going to be negatively impacted? Or are you looking at it as, you know what, the world requires my voice. The world requires me to be all of me. The world requires me to show up fully and to follow my heart. So often we're not thinking in that way. We're thinking of the former way and we're taught that we can't be too greedy. We can't aim too high. We're just going to be hurt. And oftentimes the people who tell us all of those, give us all those warnings, they genuinely do care about us and they want to make sure that we aren't hurt. But in turn, we end up keeping ourselves small. We end up keeping that lid on tight. And so we never fully develop into the legend that we were born to be. I'm Emily Williams, the founder of I Heart My Life and your I Heart My Life show host. I always say I'm just a girl from Ohio with really big dreams. And now I work from home running a dream business that helps you achieve your goals and create more joy in your life. This podcast is all about all the topics that really matter to you. And it's about giving you everything you need in one place. Mindset, relationships, wellness, lifestyle, money, business, and career. We have it all. This is your one-stop shop for all things personal development meets lifestyle. So pull up a seat, get out a pen and paper, and get ready to learn. It's time to create a life that's better than your dreams with the I Heart My Life show. This is episode 240, my biggest takeaways on desire from Mama Gina and her book, Pussy. So we recently had Mama Gina on the podcast, and I wanted to jump in and just share some of the teachings that stood out to me from her incredible New York Times bestselling book called Pussy Reclamation. And today I'm just taking you behind the scenes of some of the things I highlighted in the book, some of which I actually taught at a workshop last year. So I wanted to bring them to the podcast just so you can experience all the wisdom. And of course, the next step is for you to actually read the book. I am not assuming Mama Gina's work as my own. I am literally just sharing some of the things that stood out to me and breaking a few of the concepts down to give you the support that you need to finally go after your desires. So let's dive in. All right, I'm pulling out my workbook here. I have some notes in a Google Doc. And if you're like me, you love Kindle because you can highlight and copy and paste things into documents and just keep everything in one place. Um, I especially love reading books and then bringing them to the podcast. It's a bonus when I get to have the author on the podcast itself. And for this uh, in particular episode, like I said, I actually taught this information at a workshop and I wanted to bring it here for all of you to gain the wisdom and the knowledge that I did from this incredible book. So one of the main things that I took from this was just life for women is all about desire and following that desire. And that's really where our power is. That's where our creativity is. That's where our knowledge is. That's where our wealth is. And in the book, Mama Gina says, the feminine force is primarily responsible for desire. The masculine force is primarily responsible for the production of that desire. Now, I think that's really interesting because I think that we can also produce that desire. We can see it come to life. But I thought that was interesting how she describes it. Then she goes on to say, a desire is the interface between you and that which is greater than you. Every woman is a legend with her lid on, but every legend with a lid is a legend that never gets to live. Every woman's legend must be lived in order to feed the evolution of the world. We will never live our legend if we follow someone else's script or someone else's roadmap. Listening to and living our desires as if they were a roadmap to our truth is the way we women live our unique phenomenal gifts. Each of us has a unique voice the world needs and requires. And the key to unlocking this gift is to cherish your own storyline and to stand with every fiber of your being for the significant and momentous importance of your desires. Everything you want matters. It matters deeply, not just to you, but to everyone. We are all impacted, influenced, and shaped for the better by the radiant power of a woman's desire. Now, I know we covered this on the episode with Mama Gina, but I wanted to share it again just because I think it's such a powerful quote. The thing I love to pull out here is that each of us has a unique voice that the world requires. So really think about that for a second. When you look at your desires, are you looking at them feeling ashamed feeling like you need to hide them, feeling like you're not good enough to achieve them, feeling like if you go for those desires, then someone's going to be negatively impacted. 
Or are you looking at it as, you know what? The world requires my voice. The world requires me to be all of me. The world requires me to show up fully and to follow my heart. So often we're not thinking in that way. We're thinking of the former way. And we're taught that we can't be too greedy. We can't aim too high. We're just going to be hurt. And oftentimes the people who tell us all of those give us all those warnings. They genuinely do care about us and they want to make sure that we aren't hurt. But in turn, we end up keeping ourselves small. We end up keeping that lid on tight. And so we never fully develop into the legend that we were born to be. One of the other quotes that I put in here is not from Mama Gina. It's from Raymond Hollywell. And you've probably heard me share this before. But he says, true desire represents the urge of life seeking a fuller expression and is kept alive by the continuous expectation of its fulfillment. It brings to us the ways and means for its manifestations. The principle explains no desire is felt until the supply is ready to appear. No mind can be conscious of a need or desire unless the possibility of its fulfillment already exists. Now, this for me, it's like the mantra I live by, the quote I live by, because it encapsulates everything that I believe and everything I want you to believe as an incredible woman doing big things in the world. So when we break it down, he's essentially saying that true desire, that's our ticket to the life that we want. It truly is. It's just about you being fully expressed and desire leads you to that fullest expression. And so to look at your desire as something that makes you greedy or to look at it as you're not worthy of it or it's not possible, that's completely false. And that means that you're not actually living your fully expressed life. And so the other piece of this that's so important we're going to get to in a second is that he talks about how the desire is kept alive by the continuous expectation of its fulfillment. So how often do we have a desire and then literally in the next second, we're like, oh, well, that could never happen or I could never do that or that's too far off. I even have a client who was talking about wanting to make even more money. And she said that she always says to herself, the money is on its way. And I said to her, that's great. And what if we bring it into the present moment and we actually say the money is here because I believe the money is here. Okay. And he says in this quote, no mind can be conscious of a need or desire unless the possibility of its fulfillment already exists. So Mama Gina in this incredible book goes on to talk about the courtesans who were essentially these amazing women and Paris who were essentially pleasure seekers and they weren't prostitutes. It didn't even always involve being sexual with the person that they were with. But there was this element of power and assuredness and confidence and just way in which they put themselves out there in in a way that was really desirable. And Mama Gina says, what was the number one lesson that these women taught me? The power of desire. If there is something a woman wants, her desire alone is powerful enough to bring it to her. So really think about that in your own life. How often do we believe that we have to have it all figured out before it comes to us? We have to have the degree. We have to have the accreditation. We have to be a certain age. What if the desire is strong enough to bring it to you? She goes on to say, desire, it presses you forward even when your mind is screaming stop. (laughs) So I'd love for you to think about a time when you actually followed a crazy desire, but it ended up working in your favor. We all have stories like that. Maybe you, just like me, turned the car around metaphorically or literally and didn't go to school or didn't go to graduate school or didn't end up getting married or didn't move when you thought you were going to. And you literally went in a different direction and things worked in your favor. And it definitely wasn't logical. It wasn't something you had planned out, but you followed your heart and made it happen. So think about all those times when you followed a crazy desire, but it worked in your favor. Maybe it's something little. Maybe you decided to go to a certain restaurant yesterday. So the thing we want to do here is start to rewire your mind so that you trust your desires and you trust your instincts. Because if we're constantly thinking that our desires are wrong or they're not possible for us, our mind creates that habitual pattern, that habit, and we want to rewire it so it sees desires as truth. So in the book, she says, the first thing I had to do was reach within. To follow my deepest desires, I had to know what they were. What I began to notice was that if I could imagine it, I could attract it. 
Seeing it in my mind's eye was enough to create something in my life. I started to think of desire as a technology and I was constantly practicing how to make the most of it. So think about that. So when you look at the desires of your life, maybe your business, maybe your career, your bank account, your relationships, what if you honestly believed that if you can imagine it, you can attract it? And I know for some of you, you're thinking to yourself, well, that's not possible. You know, I don't believe in magical thinking. But really pay attention again to those previous moments where you did follow your desire. You did imagine it and it actually happened. Because sometimes we need a little bit more proof and I get that. And everyone has something in their life. And if you don't have something in your life, look at somebody else, look at stories, pick up this book because your mind will see the proof in others, even if you can't see it in yourself. And then you can start to retrain your mind in terms of what you believe is true and possible for you. Then there are also some of you who might be listening, thinking, you know what? I don't actually know what I desire. That's not even a word that I use. It's not in my vocabulary. Well, essentially, desire, of course, is something that you want. But I believe the word desire is much stronger than the word want. And in the book, Mama Gina talks about a way in which you can get more connected to your desires. So she actually has an exercise in there. And she says that in order to get connected, you literally just have a conversation with another person, someone you feel you can be open with, and you go back and forth. So person one would say, what do you have on desire? And then you answer. Maybe it's, and she uses this example in the book, I feel that I want my boyfriend more than he wants me. Then the other person says, thank you. What do you have on desire? And then you answer again. I love the new pink shoes I bought today, or I want pink shoes. I want a new wardrobe. What do you have on desire? And you just keep going, going, going. You could potentially play this with yourself, but it's probably more fun with somebody else, whether it's a friend or your partner. And you're literally just listing out the things that you want. And it's really interesting when we pay attention to this exercise, because some of us will actually want to kind of dumb down our answers or suppress our answers or deny our answers. So I want you to lay it all out there. Maybe something crazy crosses your mind. Maybe you say, I want to take a trip to Italy this month. I just want to book that ticket. I want to fly first class. That's my desire. The other person who you're doing this exercise with will just say, thank you. What's your desire? What do you have on desire? There's no element of judgment. It literally just is. And it's you starting to own what it is that you actually want. And again, I know for a lot of you, fear, doubt, insecurity, lack of trust, disbelief, I can't do that. All of that stuff is going to come up for you. And I totally get that. Okay. But you have to understand that you cannot expect big results in your life if you don't believe that they are possible for you. So really take a look at that. Where is this disbelief stemming from? Who told you that this was not possible? And do what you can, again, to remind yourself of all the times you felt a desire and made it happen, or all the times you've seen somebody else who you admire follow their heart and create a new reality. Because the next important point that Mama Gina uh, amazingly points out is that we have to actually continue to expect the desire to happen. And we heard that in the Raymond Hollywell quote as well. Uh, One of the things I learned from one of my previous mentors, David Nagel, was that you can't heat up a pot by taking it on and off the stove. He said that on his podcast. I'm going to say that again. You can't heat up a pot by taking it on and off the stove. So you might have this desire. Let's just use a tangible example. Maybe you have a desire to take a trip to Italy. But literally, you're taking the pot on and off the stove when you're thinking, I want it, but I can't do it. It's too much money. I don't have enough time, but I want it. But what will people think? But I want it, but I can't take the kids, right? So you're going back and forth. So your job is to actually hold the expectation. Mama Gina says she knows the outcome will be spectacular and she holds space for that result. This quote here is really amazing. Mama Gina says, never, ever, ever giving up on a desire is both easier and more complex than any other move the courtesan makes. Easier because you simply locate what you want and enjoy the thought of having it, regardless of how long it takes to acquire it. You enjoy the pleasure of wanting rather than disapproving of the fact that you do not have it yet. Feeling turned on at the thought of a desire actually sends an energetic vortex of attraction out into the world. Everything in your world begins to line up around that desire. The way you shut down the vortex is to disapprove of the fact that you don't have it yet or to doubt that you'll ever get it. Indulging in doubt is throwing water on the fire of desire. 
Really think about that for a second. There's so much beauty in this quote. You can go back and listen to it again. But what I want you to really hear is that throwing that doubt is like out there is like throwing water on the fire of desire. So you have this desire, you're feeling so lit up by this thing that you want. But then the doubt is literally, it's just putting that fire out. It's making making it so it's not going to happen. So what if you were the type of person who actually enjoyed the process of wanting something? I see this all the time with women who are building businesses or working towards a big goal. The end is the only thing that actually turns them on to the point where they don't even actually experience. They're not present when they're in the experience of getting it. They're not enjoying the process. And honestly, what's the point? If that's our reality, what is the point? We're literally only loving the last minute of the experience. We're not loving the full thing. So think about this. I'm going to read it again. Feeling turned on at the thought of a desire actually sends an energetic vortex of attraction out into the world. So what if you feeling amazing about this desire, knowing it's coming, knowing it's possible for you, what if that is one of the things that actually attracts it to you? It makes sense. If you wanted to actually attract a romantic partner, you believing that you deserve true love and the best is going to attract the best to you. Versus the opposite. If you don't believe that you deserve anything or anyone, you're going to repel that love or you'll attract something that you don't actually want. And yet, of course, there are a lot of things that come up for people as we go through this process, as we start to tune into our desires and continue to hold the vision. So Mama Gina says here, for whenever we get something we want, we must say goodbye to what we had. No matter how dissatisfying it might have been, it was familiar. Perhaps you desire a relationship, for example. When you finally meet someone and fall in love, your life as a single person must end. Just because you've gotten what you wanted doesn't mean you're going to feel uncomplicated joy. There will be a sense of loss as your former life disappears before your eyes. To move ahead as the happy half of a happy couple, you'll need to mourn, even briefly, the world of being single. So maybe you're experiencing that. Maybe you had this big desire of running a business or getting your dream job. Now you're there and you're realizing what, you know, what happened? (laughs) Is this what I actually want? Well, it could be that the main issue is that you need to let go of the previous reality and you might need to mourn some of the things that were an element of that previous reality. The other thing that often comes up for people as we're uncovering our desire is challenge. It says in her book, it was becoming clear to me that rupture was an important part of a woman's journey, maybe the most important part. When winter descends and the leaves fall from the trees, they decay into mulch. That mulch fertilizes the soil of the next spring. Women are cyclical beings as well. We are designed to rupture in order to continually shed the skin that no longer fits us. Our pussies are designed to go through the entire cycle of rupture through creation, shedding, bleeding, and preparation for recreation every single month. Through rupture, we evolve into new iterations of ourselves. The tears of our devastation fertilize the soil of our evolution. I'm going to read that last part again in just a second because it's so good. But think about it. How often are we looking at the challenge, especially the challenge on the path to the desire as a negative thing or as, you know what, it's not possible for me to do it because I'm experiencing this challenge. I've been through many challenges over the last few years, but I didn't ever allow that to dictate my next step. It actually inspired me. And now I've gotten to the point where I feel grateful for my challenges because it's clearly preparing me for something else, just like our cycles. Every single stage of the cycle is preparing your body for something else. What if we looked at challenge like that? She says here again, here's that quote, the tears of our devastation fertilize the soil of our evolution. What if it wasn't meant to work out until now? What if this challenge was part of the process? What if this challenge was part of you getting what you want? Think about the challenge of growing a child, of creating life. There's a lot of challenge there. There's a lot of ebbs and flows. There's a lot of transformation. There's back aches, aches, there's morning sickness, there's actual labor contractions. So whatever you're birthing now or whatever you desire to birth, remember that challenge, it's a part of the recipe. It's a part of the process. And the sooner you're able to look at that differently, the easier you're going to move through it, right? Just like breathing through a contraction. So one of the issues here, though, is that we haven't actually been taught how to deal with challenge. 
The issue is that we are actually so wounded, as Mama Gina describes in the quote I'm about to read, that we don't actually know how to move through challenge. She says, the problem is that we women are so deeply wounded by the masculine culture in which we've been raised that anger is what comes out first. So how often do we look at challenge and then go into a place of victim or blame, right? We don't see the beauty of the challenge. We make hard equal bad. I've been through many challenges throughout the last few years, and I didn't always look at them with desire in mind. I didn't always look at them as positive things or things that were going to help me get closer to my goals. But what would happen if we did look at our challenges that way? What if it wasn't meant to work out until now? We are meant to experience pleasure and joy, all of it. But can we experience pleasure and joy through the rapture, through the moments that don't actually present themselves as pleasure and joy? Mama Gina talks about the fact that we are all meant to live a fabulous life. She says, I realized that the imaginary games that I had played as a little girl were not games at all. They were desires that were now coming true all around me. So are you in alignment? Are you living out the desires of the little girl? Are you even tuning in to that little girl and checking in with what she wants? Are you living the life according to what you had dreamed? You have a chance to do that. Everyone does. One of the questions or one of the quotes here from the book around fabulous is, Mama Gina says, one dictionary definition of fabulous is based upon or relating to a fable. A fable is a legend that inspires, literally breathes life into. With the telling of a fable, meaning is restored to life. The exquisite courtesan restored the meaning to life for everyone who encountered her. Every woman has the potential to be fabulous, to restore the meaning to life for herself and others when she plugs into her own external powers of radiant turn on. So what are the things that actually turn you on? I'm not talking about sexual turn on necessarily. I'm talking about the things that turn you on, the things that excite you, the things that bring you joy, the things that make you smile, make you feel reconnected to your previous self as well as your future self, the things that help you explore your gifts, help you showcase your gifts to the world, help you create change and help you feel like you're in your purpose. Those moments that make you smile. I would really encourage you to not only do that exercise that we talked about a few minutes ago, but allow yourself to dream about that. What were the things that you wanted as a child? Maybe you have some of them now. Maybe you don't. Maybe you can implement certain things in your life that will help your life transform, help you get closer to that dream and to that vision. I imagine it's closer than you think. I want you to also listen to the episode with Regina and remind yourself of the story of stepping into the dress. So for me, I'm going to paraphrase here. This story is so powerful because it's such an easy representation and something that stands out in my mind that I can refer to on a regular basis if I'm not fully stepping into the dress. And you can literally go and look at Regina's Instagram and you'll see she is every single day stepping into that dress physically and metaphorically. (laughs) So essentially, this story is of her deciding that she wanted to start the School of Womanly Arts at her brownstone in New York City. And she decided she absolutely needed a painting of herself above the mantle or wherever she was going to put it. And she needed a dress to wear while she was being the painter was actually doing the work. So she went to a store, found a dress that she absolutely loved, took her breath away. Turned out it was $6,000. Her friend reminded her that she could wear the dress just for the sitting and return it. So that's what she tried to do. But what she realized was after a full day of sitting for this painting, the artist was actually only done with her face. And so she would have to come back multiple times and thus increasing the chance of her ruining the dress. And when she shared this with her husband at the time, he said, Regina, you are not taking the dress back. You are going to step into the dress. You were going to buy shoes for the dress, earrings for the dress, hose and gorgeous lingerie. The next time you go for a sitting, you're going to take a car service downtown wearing the dress. You're going to learn how to get in and out of the car in a gown. Let the dress teach you how to be Mama Gina. Let the dress take you and introduce you to who you want to become. Now, I love this quote because we all have a metaphorical dress. Maybe for you, it's buying a house. Maybe it's getting a ring. Maybe it's investing in something that's going to change your life. Maybe it's going on a retreat, taking the trip. What does it actually look like for you to step fully into your desires and to embody the type of woman who has those desires and lives it out on a regular basis? Okay, we all have the metaphorical dress. 
So that's what I'd love for you to take a second and think about. Maybe do some journaling. Okay. What is your metaphorical dress? What is a representation of you stepping into the next level version of yourself and your dream life? We all have something that we can do literally today. It could be big. It could be a $6,000 dress. <laughs> it could be smaller. It could be you standing up to a friend or speaking your truth to a parent or your spouse. It could be buying a URL. But think about what it looks like to fully embody and become the person you want to be now instead of waiting for it to happen, because that will help you manifest so much quicker. That will help you give off the energy of the person who already has what you want and thus attract it to you quicker. That doesn't mean that you're going to have no challenge. In fact, you might have more challenge. You might be being prepared for something and strength is required for that next level. Okay. So remember that piece around rupture. Now, obviously this is a very, very small snippet of my takeaways from this book. I want you to read this book. It's so, so good. It's called Pussy or Reclamation by Regina Thomas Hour. And she goes by Mama Gina, AKA Mama Gina. And it's such a beautiful book. Okay. New York Times bestseller. I want you to check it out and share your feedback with me. Share the moments that took your breath away. Share the ahas that you have throughout reading this incredible, incredible book. And I look forward to talking to you soon. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the I Heart My Life show. Now do us a favor and tell people about this episode. It's truly our duty to make sure that the I Heart My Life movement is spread far and wide. The truth is life can be challenging, but it is possible for all women to love themselves and their lives. And while you're at it, send a link to this episode to three of your friends today, or maybe even post it on social media. Use the hashtag I hurt my life show. That's hashtag I hurt my life show. And if you'd like to help me personally, then please rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts. Give us some stars, cheer us on, and leave a review because believe it or not, that stuff actually really does help. And I read all of them. Please remember everything you desire is meant for you and possible. Keep showing up, taking action, and believing in your dreams.